Previously on Wimp to Worry. They said, hey Johnny, I want to be a champ. Train hard, fight easy. You got to beat everyone here. How hard do you want it? How much do you want it? I just want to make champions. I'm not too concerned at this stage. Yeah, life hasn't, hasn't always been easy. Uh, that's one of the problems with most gyms is you don't make money out of fighters. <laughs> Inside leg kick, and they're coming again. But when you get in, you just fight. There's a lot of tough guys out there, but without the discipline to get up and train, they won't stay on top forever. And finally, the matchup was settled. Like that, boys. Or were they? It's week 17, with only 12 more training sessions before fight night, and the emphasis is on skill drills and development of muscle memory. Four weeks to go, around about 12 sessions to go, and we just, it's repetition time. We've got to get muscle memory key for these guys, and not, they can't be thinking when they're in the cage. It's got to be muscle memory, muscle memory, just drill, drill, drill. Focus is key at this point. These guys, they need focus. They need to be aware of the, the end goal when it's just around the corner. So they need to be on cue, training every session, focused, 100%. Last four weeks, like I say, is repetition. So they've got two sparring sessions. They've got one morning session with Scotty, one sparring session with me um, a week, and they've got wrestling with me and jits with Fabio. With Julian gone, Danny is paired with Tim. And Heath's departure leaves Ryan without an opponent for the moment. Danny has told Coach Ritchie that he won't be continuing in the series. We're a month out from the fights and I've decided that I have to go home. Uh, I've got some pretty awful shin splints uh, amongst, you know, and, and just general wear and tear on my body. I've been training too much, basically. You know, I don't have, I don't have friends here, I don't have family, I don't have a social life at all. I'm absolutely devastated, you know. Uh, this has been uh, the, sole, the sole focus of my life for the last six months. It's a shame, I really like Danny, he's a real character of the series, everyone tends to get on with him. He's very, very fiery at training, so he, he pumps people up, but unfortunately he's out. It's week 18, there's just eight training sessions to go. And now Matt's gone too. I was doing extra training and uh, I was wrestling and got taken down awkwardly and uh, the other guy landed in, in my hips and I, at first I just thought, oh, I hurt my tailbone, like, you know, when, when you fall over on the concrete you got a sore tailbone. Then the next morning I, I woke up and my whole, my whole body was twisted round. It eventuated that I damaged my uh, sacroiliac joint, so it's where my spine and my pelvis meet. Devastated, I couldn't fight. Like, really unfortunate. He was one of the naturals. He picked things up very quickly. Great muscle memory. His stand up was very sharp. So, some changes going to happen again with the matchups, but it is what it is. With Matt out, this frees up his opponent. Week 19. It's nostalgia week. Today's session, we're going back to our old gym, McMahon's Point. No longer a gym. It's a quick visit and then back to training with a jog to the park and hill sprints. About four months ago now, we're doing hill sprints here at the um, here at the park. We also pushed a car up a hill. It was good fun. Richie still has concerns about one of the wimps. I've had concerns about Richard for probably about two months now. Um, he's not been training. I call him up, I text him, I tell him he's, he needs to come to training. He tells me um, he's got some things going on in his social. Um, he's training elsewhere. Look, the only reason really I'm keeping him in is because he's a good matchup for Carl. Yeah, well, it's part of my secret squirrel plan. I've got five rounds at um, 10 o'clock this morning with Ben McCulloch, who's yeah, ranked in the top 10 in the world. For so yeah, so he's pretty lucky, he's a good friend of mine, so he's been helping me out a bit in preparation for the fight. And just, um, yeah, hill sprints before going five rounds with him was suicide. It's pretty much suicide anyway, <laughs> jumping in the ring with him, but yeah. Carl came to me, end of training, uh, night four last, and he told me that he has concerns that Richard, his headspace isn't right, he's not at home, he's not at training, and he feels he may not even turn up to the fight. 
just met up with Richard, took him for coffee and explained to him that I'm dropping him from the series. I will try and get him a matchup, but it's a week out, chances are it's not going to happen. He's not very happy about it. I've explained this, my situation, I've told him my thought process and Carl's concerns and um, he's just got to live with it. Carl is relieved he is not to fight his friend and flatmate. So now a few matchups need to be jiggled. With Richard gone and Heath gone, Ryan will fight Carl. Ben and Francis stay the same, as does Tom and Jed, Jimmy and Adam, Vaughan and Sheldon, Sonia and Laura, Josiah and Jack, Daniel and Julian both gone, Tim and Matt both gone. Week 20, the last week before the Friday night weigh-in and Saturday's fight night. Fighters need to prepare to get into the right headspace. Part of this is choosing their walk-on music. The music was an interesting one. I'd told the guys for several weeks that I needed their music in. I received a, a message from Sonia saying we'd managed to pick out of all the songs in the world the exact same walkout song. I contacted Sonia and told Laura to already put it in. Sonia was very upset. She said that she'd had that music in her mind for months and um, she was really sold on it. That sort of fired me up and I tried to notice how that's made me feel in the last few days and with my training and I think I can, so long as I can contain it and not, um, and not let it get the better of me and use it in a controlled way, which I'm really trying to focus on, then it should help me take the fight where I need to. Sonia then come back and asked if um, she could have the same track by a different artist. So I went back to Laura and Laura, I don't think she was particularly happy about it, but you know, she said, that's fine. Most fighters have uh, a walk on music that means something to them or something that motivates them or makes, uh, reminds them of you know, why they're in the ring. They should constantly remind themselves that they've done the work, the hard work and the preparation. Um, if they've done it, then they're ready to fight. If they haven't done the preparation, that's when uh, they start coming up with the excuses. If you know, someone doesn't you know, uh, put your music on or the other person happened to walk out with your music or they played it too fast or forgot it completely and, and that's, your, that's your excuse to lose the fight or not do the best you can, then well, that's just the loser's attitude. Before the weigh-in, how mentally tough are the competitors? Uh, oh, my pain threshold is pretty good. Um, unless, unless you choke me out cold and I can't do anything about it, I'll probably pass out before I tap. Um. I, she'll have to break my arm. I don't want to walk out of that cage the first time I step into it and say, oh, I tapped because I was a bit in pain. That's not an option. <laughs> not after six months of training. Someone's going to have to knock me out before I, uh, before I give up. My pain threshold, I leave fairly high. I've copped a good few whacks and shake them off and keep going. I've seen stars a few times, but I don't think it's really that much of a worry for me, the, the pain from the hits. When I'm in my zone, when my blood is rushing through my veins, when I'm in a fight, I almost cannot feel any pain. I'll probably snap my arm first before I tap. It's Friday, the night of the weigh-in. And finally, Val gets to meet her opponent. Um, her name's Milan, um, she's from Perth. Um, I couldn't find anyone um, for Valerie. She contacted me on Facebook and uh, she said she's up for it, which is awesome. So um, she's flying over now and we're gonna go and pick her up. The girl that I was supposed to fight dropped out on Friday, so, and then Mel, Mel, Melan, um, she stepped up three days ago. Mel, Mel, Mel. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> nice to finally meet you. Ready to fight, yes. Now you're late, I gotta get time. Okay, so. Time to weigh in. Weigh-ins are what made mixed martial arts a legitimate sport. So it's very important that we, we match people to their size and their weight. Uh, this is the official uh, weigh-in for Whip to Warrior and most of you guys are fighting tomorrow night. So um, I hope it's a good, safe competition for you guys. So the first match for the night is a lightweight match from the red corner, Jimmy Connolly, and from the blue corner, Adam Conridge. Jimmy has made weight. Well done. Yeah. 
Adam weighs in at 68.4. Adam has also made weight. Well done. Jack has also made weight. Well done. If there's anyone that doesn't make weight, it does depend on how much weight they're over. I think most of the guys are very close, but the option is they either go away, they've got normally an hour to cut weight. If they fail at that stage, then it goes to their opponent. Their opponent then agrees or says they, they, they're happy to fight them. If they're not, the fight's cancelled. Okay, Laura stepping on the scales. Laura weighs in at 64.6. Laura has made weight. Well done. Okay, Sonia is over. So Sonia has not made weight just yet. Good to step off. Yeah. So you can accept the you can accept the, the fight as it stands. Yeah. Or she has two hours to lose the weight. It's up to you. Look, it is disappointing, and I'm not gonna going to lie. Um, I started well above the 66 kilos. I think when I first weighed in, I was just under 70. So um, I've had to work hard on this process to be able to get under that. Um, and so it, it is really challenging from a mental and a physical perspective to make sure that you're under that particular mark and you know that the whole fight system is based on weight categories. And I've been talking to the guys every session, make sure you, you're aware of your weight. and. Um, yeah, it's disappointing. Taking nothing away from Sonia, I'm, I'm well aware of what she did to try and make weight today. Um, it was just, uh, just one of those things that goes with, with sport. I was um, really disappointed in her. It shows a lot of um, lack of discipline. And I know for a fact that um, before the weigh-ins, she had a chance to lose a bit of weight. So do you want to accept it now, or do you yeah, want to make her lose the weight? Sorry, okay. okay. Okay, so she's accepted the fight um, with, your, with your being a bit over, so congratulations, you know, she's done the right thing for you. Okay? I get one free punch. Is that the right one? One free punch. In true warrior style, Laura agrees to the fight with Sonia, even though she'll potentially be at a disadvantage. Fortunately, all the other wimps make the weight. Fight's around the corner now. Um, everything that I can do, I've done. The training is done, the drilling's done, the conditioning's done. All they need to do now is get their head right. They'll be very nervous tomorrow. You know, there's a lot of people here to see them. Um, so they have to, have to deal with those nerves. When they get in the cage, the first 10 seconds when they get punched in the face, they won't like that person in front of them at all. No matter how good friends they are, they'll be fighting for real. So. Ner nerves will kick in, nerves will kick in in the, in the change rooms. And when they walk into that cage, the faces will change. They'll have to. It's business, like it's the, we're there to fight, so as soon as the bell rings then I'll be business, as soon as it stops it'll be back to friends again. It doesn't need to change, I'm already in the headspace, competitive, you know, it doesn't matter that we're friends, it doesn't matter about anything when I get in there I'm going to win, so I'm already there. I'm going to go for the win, for sure, yeah, like that's what it's about. Like You can't look to anyone to, you know, to have a bit of a breather or a break. You've got to keep consciously reminding yourself why you're in there, what you're doing and um, that can play tricks on you all the time. I can't learn skills from here, I can't learn strength from here. Mm. It's This next 24 hours is going to be all about headspace, getting it in the right place and making sure that I'm confident when I walk out there tomorrow. At the moment I'm good, ready to go. I'd like to state firmly that the whole process of this Wimp to Warrior is not about who wins, who loses. This isn't Wimp to Winner. This is Wimp to Warrior and the warrior status comes from six months of training, of pretty hellish training at times, working through injuries, um, schedules, and then stepping into the cage. Once you step into that cage, as far as I'm concerned, you become a warrior, win or lose. Next time on Wimp to Warrior, it's fight night. <laughs>